Here we have an Epson 1400 and we will be installing this uh, continuous ink system. And to do this, you have to have, you start with the printer being on and you push the ink button on the front of the printer. That will bring the cartridge, uh, the, the carrier, the whole print head mechanism uh, to this point right here. Next we're going to unplug the printer. Okay, now that it's unplugged, we didn't turn it off from here, we just unplugged it. That allows us to move this shuttle back and forth. Before we do that, we're going to open it up. We're going to remove all of the existing ink cartridges. Put those aside. Okay, with the ink cartridges removed, the next thing we need to do is remove this cover flap here. And to do this, depending on the model printer you have, like I said, this is the Epson 1400, it might have a slightly different uh, mechanism to release this lid. So this hinge right here is being held in right there. So push that piece in, and we're going to try to pry it pry it off I'm not too concerned about saving this part because I'm going to use this printer till it's dead okay so there we have that off. I broke the plastic there. Like I said, I'm not too worried about it. You might want to take more time uh, if you think that you are going to um, want to take the, the continuous ink system out. Okay, so here we have the ink uh, tank. And when you install this, you want to make sure that you keep this tank level with the printer itself. The other thing that you want to do, now they're designed, some of these are designed differently. You want to make sure that the ink levels in these chambers on the back that go up to this kind of vent tube, that there's no ink uh, rising up. So right here, this is all low. If it was high, let's see if I can get some ink in the chamber. Well, if it was high, you just want to tip it forward like this and let it drain out into the main chamber. And then we'll put this aside. Okay, next we have the actual cartridges. And we will be pushing this over here. Now we got something on that print head, if you can tell, on the nozzle. You want to make sure that these are clean. There we go, it's just a piece of styrofoam. But you want to make sure that this is totally clean before you, before you install it. Now we are going to put it in. And as you put these in, you want to make sure that you seat eat every single one of these cartridges. So to do that, you just push down, and it's got this clip here. Just make sure you hear it click in place. Okay. So they're all clicked in place. You, you apply some pressure to, to do it because it's one unit. It's a little awkward. This is the reset button. When it runs out, when, it, when the cartridge uh, chip tells the computer that you're out of ink, uh, you'll push the ink button. And then once it moves it over here, then you just hold this down for about five seconds push the ink button again and it will actually start, uh, it will pick up where it left off on the print job. So that's a neat uh, feature, you don't lose whatever you're printing at the time. 
Okay, so the next thing we need to do is secure this ribbon. And you may see air bubbles uh, in the line. Don't worry, those will take care of themselves. So we'll put this over here. Now what you want to do is make sure that the length of the um, ink line is long enough so that when the carriage passes to both extremes, so as far as it can go to the left, as far as it can go to the right, that it has a long enough, uh, l uh, some length so that it doesn't yank the actual carriage. Now this specific model gives you uh, something like this so that you can attach the ink line and you, I ended up having, depending on the printer, having to play around with where to place it and unfortunately uh, it's not uh, easily moved because this is a very strong adhesive. Um, but the best place that I found is roughly in the middle for this and the Epson uh, so the Epson 1400 and the Epson 1430 so I'm just going to place this right here and then I will feed this like so double check on the length Okay, so it's kind of snagging over there, so we'll give it a little bit of slack. Alright, we got some slack there. Come back over here. Alright. Okay, and there we have it. So we will go ahead and put this back where it goes. So the next step is to remove these siphon plugs. You want to have a paper towel on hand because there is kind of ink residue on these. And I hang on to these just in case I ever have to move the printer, put it in a vehicle or something. This way you won't be spilling ink all over. And it comes with these little respirator plugs. These fit in these holes and it's just kind of like a little air filter to prevent anything from getting in but allowing it to breathe. And they just kind of wedge in there. Okay there you have it. Move this out of the way. If you have kids Make sure that they do not have access to this. Little kids, I mean. This will be your worst nightmare, uh, cleanup wise, if this becomes a problem. But other than that, we'll set it out of the way on the side of the printer. This cable is long enough uh, that you're not going to have any problems um, putting it behind the printer or wherever and it just closes like that. It kind of pinches the uh, the line a little bit. It's not that big of a deal. It's not crushing it. So long as it's not pinched or totally bent in half, you should be fine. So we'll plug the printer back in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually switch the direction of this hose so that it loops back this way. Um, that way, as it travels past, it doesn't kink in the same way that it has been. So you'll have to kind of play around with yours, see what, what way you like it best. Okay, so while I was filming, uh, my battery died on my camera, so I just want to kind of finish up. I ended up using this kind of tape here. It's really thick. Um, and this seems to work better than the plastic piece uh, attachment that they give you. Um, so I just kind of have it uh, just right on there. Um, just wanted to show you where I have this mounted. This seems to work very well. 
Um, so it's just at the edge of this icon right there. This seems to be the best place for uh, this bracket here. So when you when you set it all up, you plug your printer back in, and then you push the ink button. Uh, that will bring the um, shuttle over so that you can change the colors. Um, it may bring it to here where you cycle through each color. Once it does that, you just hold in this button for a few seconds, let go, um, and then you push the ink button again and it should work just fine. Now when you're printing, if it suddenly com uh, comes up that it's out of ink mid-print, uh, all you have to do, you don't have to cancel anything, you just push the ink button, push the cycle button, let go, push the ink button again, and it should resume your print, whatever you had in there. So. That is how to install and use the continuous ink system. Like I said, there's a link in the description below if you're looking to buy the exact same model that I have. If you have any questions, let me know in the section below. And I also have some other uh, reviews I'm going to be doing. Uh, this is the Epson 1400. I actually have two Epson 1430s that I use. So. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Please rate and comment. Have a good day.